All right, right there. So let's move on to our next topic. Our next topic is going to be um, going into a season, there's generally heavy favorites winning divisions. Tell us about a division, Dustin, where you see things shaking out differently than what the experts predict. What of the eight divisions, which one do you think is going to be a little more topsy-turvy and turn out differently? Give me a bold prediction. This is bold. bold. It's it's so bold, and it's never happened in the history of the NFL. Oh, jeez. Okay. Very bold. The NFC West. I have my eyes on the NFC West, and my bold take on this is that every single team from the NFC West is going to make the postseason, which since the NFL expanded to seven oh, teams, boy. an entire oh, division man. can make the playoffs. I see just so much talent, so much competitiveness in this division. You've got the Ram, the revamped Rams with uh, Matt Stafford in there. They've got an insane defense, and McVay can actually do something and rely on his quarterback to throw passes rather than having to tell him how to read the defense. Yeah. Um, you've got the 49ers where they were in the Super Bowl just two years ago. And last year, you could just tell it was all the injuries. I think they had something like 31 people on injured reserve at one time. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, so they're right back in the mix of things. Plus with Trey Lance and what Kyle Shanahan can do with being creative with the offense, maybe even throwing in two quarterback sets from here and there. It's it, never worked. You don't really? see it in the NFL, uh, but if someone who could pull it off, it could be Shannon. So if you're saying all three the team, all three wild cards are coming from the NFC West, and of course the division winners getting in, that means you're getting no wild cards from all other three divisions. Not. I think that you've got C. I have the Rams winning the division, and you've got Seattle, you've got the 49ers, and you've got the Cardinals, and I think that all three of those teams are better than what you have in the rest of the conference besides the division winners. Because let's say you take New Orleans from the NFC South, for example. They're going to have a down year. Ah, no. I love the Saints this year. There is an opening for the Cardinals to get that last wild card spot and make it so that the NFC West is the first division in NFL history where every single team makes the playoffs. So the Cardinals, I think, are a stretch. Um, But I'll give you, they are... They're fully loaded. And they brought in J.J. Watt, which while he's on the decline, he's a great locker room presence, great locker room guy. I'm worried about the Seahawks. I love the Seahawks. I'm a big Russell Wilson fan. But the way they petered out at the end of last season and they just didn't show up for that playoff game against the Rams, I'm worried about them. You think Seattle, though? I think, I think they'll have a hot enough start that they will. They they always start hot. And that will get propel them enough into the playoffs. Okay. Ready for my hot take on the division? I'm ready. Okay. So, uh, this is what's kind of cool about our takes. You took the NFC West, all eyes are on there, great teams, great expectations. I got another one with great expectations, but I see it playing out a lot different differently. I am going to the AFC North. Ooh. And here in the AFC North, everyone's talking Browns and Ravens, Browns and Ravens. I'm sorry. Neither of them is winning the division. There's one team that we're sleeping on that traditionally is a powerhouse, that played well for the majority of last season, Everyone's counting them out. They have great winning pedigree, and they are just going to sneak their way right back up to the top. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ben Roethlisberger is in the best shape of his life. He came ready to play all these years that he's been like, ah, you know, I'm good enough to get by on my talent. Well, he's realized that Father Time's catching up, and uh, he's got to take a couple pages out of Tom Brady's book if he wants his career to even continue. This might be a swan song, but everyone's saying Big Ben's done. The Steelers are going to lose because they brought him back they are wrong big ben's gonna come ready to play he's gonna ball out this year and Najee harris what a great story i love this guy he's gonna come in and bring pittsburgh steelers football back to running the rock so while big ben's gonna be there ready to play they're gonna be run centric and the team that's been run centric is they're gonna outrun them that's the baltimore ravens here's my other hot take i think the browns are gonna start a little slow they're going to have an okay midseason. It's going to get rougher towards the end of the year. They'll get in the playoffs. Browns are finishing it too. But here's the hottest take I have for the AFC North. The Baltimore Ravens are missing the playoffs. Oh, they, no. are no. they are They yeah. are out. They are finishing not just out of the playoffs. They're going to be bottom half. That is nuts. nuts. Lamar Jackson, he, he's got to just get his throwing down. He's not reliable. When the pressure's on, he doesn't deliver. The Ravens' defense is even okay. The, the Ravens' defense is probably a little bit above average. But... They've been ravaged by injuries in the yeah, running back. That is true. Justice Hill is out now. Um, 
and then the injury they had with J.K. Dobbins. Like, okay, the Ravens are like, yeah, we've won 21 preseason games in a row. Well, good for you. You set that record. You know who else was undefeated in the preseason? It was the Browns and the Lions who went winless all year when the games counted. Uh, the, I think the Magic's run out on Harbaugh. This is going to be a rough year, and I've got the Ravens going 7-10. and 10. Just one game above the Cincinnati Bengals, who, while at the cellar, will be surprisingly competitive, and they will be in lots of games in the fourth quarter, I believe, in Joe Burrow. I, I'm really pulling for Joe Burrow. I want him to come back from his injury and to be a presence in the NFL, be one of those really good young quarterbacks for a year to come that's unfortunate in his injury, and I really hope he comes back from it. But your Ravens take. I can, Ravens I can understand the injury at angle. Um, especially J.K. Dobbins, and but you've seen what Gus Edwards can do in the past. And I don't believe he, Gus. I do I, not. I think it does. It, yeah, sure. You put Gus Edwards on a different team with a bad O line, then sure, I'll agree you that he probably isn't high caliber. But he, Baltimore has a good offensive line, and they love to run the football. They brought and Le'Veon Bell in they, because they're that decimated to the practice. practice to the, Head case, Le'Veon Bell is now in Baltimore. And they're, as I said, they're run first, but they don't have anyone except for their quarterback, who's one of the best running quarterbacks in the league. I'll give you that. He's going to have to throw, and teams are going to make him throw. Remember in the playoffs against the Chargers when Gus Bradley, defensive coordinator, runs out of quarters set, and he's like, what do I do with this? Yeah, that's what he's going to be facing. Yeah, he was all, that was also before his MVP season. Uh, I'm not it was his first season, and yes, they did utilize him mostly as a running back that first year. Well, 